So today, gonna be talking to you about log file analysis. Does anybody here know what log file analysis is or has done one? Put your hands up. Couple guys, couple, that's exciting, that's exciting. All right. So for those of you that are not aware, all right, so what is log file analysis? Log file analysis in the context of SEO is to give us search specialists a complete view of how the search engines view our website. Uh, Crawl logs come in, um, or log files come in a few variations, including Apache, Nginx, and IIS, IIS logs. Um, and they're a powerful tool in the SEO toolkit. So, um, you know, if you're into technical SEO and you're doing it, you should definitely uh, look into it. So what is it used for and how is it um, applicable to you know, the average website? Um, you know, it can be useful because you can identify issues um, such as the search engines crawling your site that you might not otherwise know um, if you're doing you know, analysis using any other method. Um, it gives us a very deep understanding of, um, of the structure. It gives us a very deep understanding of um, the crawling aspect, what the search engine's going. Um, not so much um, rendering, but a lot, it can be used with, um, with looking at indexing, comparing crawl data versus index data, and if there's any mismatches there, it's uh, quite interesting. But um, tools that we use, well, I, I use, is um, Screaming Frog Log File Analyzer. Analyzer, I think it's quite good. There is other crawl-based tools, such as OnCrawl and JetOctopus, um, but I do prefer to use the standalone tool um, Google Search Console just came out with a crawl stats report, so it's pretty cool. Everybody can access it um, in their Search Console just by going to settings, crawl stats, and you can get a whole bunch of data there without actually getting access to logs, because sometimes, you know, as SEOs, right, getting the log files, particularly from enterprise clients, can be quite difficult. Um, so, you know, it does give us a, a little bit of an insight and an overview into what's going on into the website. So what can you do with log files, right? Like why would you get them? What do you need them for? So one of the things you can do is you can find 404 error pages. Um, basically, you know, you might be uh, doing a screaming frog analysis and you'll see 404 pages, sure, but there may be pages that exist or, or that used to exist on your site um, that are no longer existing, but the crawl bot is still going there for the reasons that, you know, there may be external links pointing to that page. Um, there may be, um, the ghost effect where, you know, Google still thinks it's there. Um, unless you put a 410 code, Google may still come back to the 404 page. So you can, what you can do is you can either, you know, recreate the page or you can redirect it to a more relevant page. You can find 301 pages. So this is quite good if, um, let's just say, you know, Google's can constantly and continuously coming back to the 301 page. Um, this is interesting where, you know, it, it's, you've already told it it's moved and it's continuously viewing the 301. So you need to identify, okay, what's going on here? Is there strong external link equity going to the page? Um, and really, um, you can think, okay, is it worth reviving? And it just gives you a bit more of an insight into, um, what pages on the website Google is treating, um, a bit more, I guess, intensely, a bit more visiting a bit more frequently than, uh, than other pages. So you can also find 500 error status codes. This is quite handy because, you know, there may be several pages on the site that just don't work from a code perspective. Um, you know, the, crawl, the crawler's not gonna um, be able to see the site. All it's gonna be seeing is an internal server error, which we don't want. Um, and it's definitely worth, you know, looking into. So crawl budget analysis. So you can use calls from the crawl stats, crawl stats from GSC or the log file analyzer, and we can work out how often the search engines are visiting our website. Um, this gives us an idea of how many, um, how many pages the search engines max budget is to crawl. Um, and we can work out then our given maximum crawl budget for a given period. So it's very, very handy in that perspective. Um, you can prioritize your crawl. So um, you can actually uh, help determine, you know, what are the most important pages on the site. Uh, for example, there may be a pricing page that um, changes price frequently or a news page that changes content regularly. Um, we can see exactly how frequently these pages are being viewed by the search engines and we can then use our tools in our SEO arsenal to prioritize these pages if we deem that the pages aren't being crawled as frequently as we would like. Um, as I said, we can add internal links or external links to kind of like increase the crawl for those specific pages. We can also identify crawl deficiencies. So we can work out any page or subdirectories that may not be crawled. This can be particularly frustrating if you know you have multiple pages on your site that some for some reason they're just not getting indexed, they're just not getting picked up. Um, we can go into the logs and we can see is it being picked up or has Google not seen it at all? 
Um, what can happen here is may, we may be able to identify that you know it is being crawled and it's just not being indexed, which we can then investigate further. Or the fact that it may not be getting crawled at all, and therefore, what can you do to help that? You know, do you create an external sitemap and add the links? Do you build internal, external links, etc.? Um, yeah, I mean, you work it out on a case by case basis. You can also understand search engine patterns, so you can identify the crawl frequency of other crawlers other than Google, such as you know Bing you know, Chinese Beidou, Russian Yandex, and DuckDuckGo. Yes, for those of you playing at home, DuckDuckGo is where it's at in 2021. Um, this is handy for those respective search engines crawling because it can give us an indication of what that search engine specifically is looking for on our site. So are they crawling pages more frequently that have extensive content? Are they specifically looking at pages that have, you know, a large link equity? And are they viewing those pages more frequently? It gives you an idea of if you do want to, like, optimize for that search engine. What are they seeing on your site that's working? And what if, if that is what it is, you can then kind of like increase um, the velocity of that method and see if you get a positive result. So you can also analyze the time the Google bots are crawling. So this is actually very, very interesting. Um, you know, if you have a, if you have an e-commerce business, right? And you know, you're nine to five and most of all your traffic comes between the hours of nine to five. If you also see that the crawl bots are using the, uh, viewing the site during the same period, what you can do is you can actually set the crawl rate. Bing is amazing for this because you can actually go in there and set the hourly rate. So if, um, if your main traffic is coming from nine to five, you can set the hours to crawl it between, you know, midnight and 6 p.m., 6 a.m. as the major times for Google to come and see a site. This is the whole, the whole reason for this is we wanna balance out the load server. The last thing we want is, you know, having a resource where, um, you know, it's not being used 70 or 80% of the time. It's only being used in nine to five, particularly um, if most of the traffic is coming from the bots. So that's the, the beauty of it is you can schedule the time that they go and view your website. Um, it's great for, you know, saving on bandwidth and server resources. So you can block bots causing large amounts of bandwidth. Um, you can actually view your logs and you can actually see certain um, hosts and certain IP addresses that are viewing your pages and creating a, a, a large amount of requests. Um, the beauty, uh, probably a great tactic to use here is you can identify um, the range in which certain like certain bots crawl. So Googlebot will crawl within a certain range. Uh, Bing will crawl within a certain range. If we see that the crawl bot is within a different IP range, we can then uh, determine that it's been spoofed. And then we can conclude that it's either being used by a scraper. Um, somebody is either trying to you know, view it in Chrome inspect and changing their user agent, or they're using some sort of a Chrome extension um, user agent um, changer where they're viewing your site and doing something that probably they shouldn't, you can then go ahead and block these IPs, um, and put it on a blacklist. So it's very, very handy. Um, and yeah, guys, that, that's all I had. Um, you know, were there any questions? Sure, you know, everybody's excited and you know, gonna give me some curly ones. Let's do it. <laughs>